Hi, this is Sharon Harris, and for my screencast, I chose to look at the prints and photographs collection. I am a science teacher, and some of the other uh, collections were more problematic in terms of how I would use them, but the prints and photographs section lends itself very nicely um, in many, many ways. Um, and I'll show you very quickly, hopefully not too long, um, how I would do that. So I would click first on the prints and photographs section at the Library of Congress website. And just to familiarize yourself with this, there is the ability to search for a specific topic. There are featured collections. Um, and there is a listing of all the different collections, which sometimes it's obvious what the collections are about, such as baseball cards or the Civil War. But other times it's less obvious, like the Curtis collection or the Carpenter Collection, which I will come back to in just a minute. But in the search uh, box, uh, I have a, a very strong interest in disease and the causes of disease and prevention of disease. So I'm going to type in typhus, and you'll see that when you begin to type in a search, just like any other kind of search site, you will get lots of options. Just interested in typhus in general. Lots of pictures come up of uh, typhus work, especially with um, the development of vaccinations. And I want to draw your attention to a couple of the different photographs and describe how I would use these. The first I want to look at is one called Harvesting Embryonic em Membranes from Eggs Infected with Louse-Borne Typhus. Um, on the page where the photograph appears, you'll get all kinds of information such as the title, the photographer, and of great importance, I think, is the rights advisory. If you do plan on printing this and making multiple copies, you want to make sure you check and uh, assure yourself that that's okay. So with this particular photograph, I liked this um, because I, I can see using this in similar ways that we used the photograph uh, earlier in the week, I can see giving this to my students and asking them what's wrong with this picture. And hopefully they would be able to tell me that even without a description, here's a woman working either in the food industry or um, in a lab somewhere, although it doesn't look very laboratory-like, but she's not wearing any kind of protection, either to protect her from whatever is in these eggs or to protect the eggs from stuff that she has on her. So hopefully they would be able to tell me that she's not wearing gloves, she's not wearing a mask, um, it doesn't look like any kind of precautions are being taken at all. So that would be one way I could use these. And then I would go to, there are lots of pictures on here of how not to conduct science, but I would certainly show them this picture and say that this is how you want to conduct science in a classroom. Here the scientist is wearing protective clothing, has a lab coat on, he's wearing a mask, he uh, is wearing gloves, and he's working in a contained environment that will protect both him and the, uh, the rest of the world from whatever it is he's working with. In light of the Ebola outbreak, um, I think this is pretty important stuff. There's one other picture I want to show you because I thought it was kind of, where was it, interesting. Here, uh, this doctor is dissecting a brain from a guinea pig and again no protection whatsoever and the guinea pig is infected with typhus. How not to do science. Um, I want to go back to prints and photographs catalog and go to a specific uh, collection. I chose the carpenter collection because I liked the picture of the dog sled and I like winter and it actually proved to be a really good site for me to go to. Now remember, I've not clicked science and technology. This has nothing to do with typhus or anything like that, but it proved to be a really good site for my science classes. Um, it gives you description. You can view all the pictures. I like that, viewing all the pictures at once. Uh, this particular uh, co collection is um, based on archaeology and geography. And so there were a lot of photographs that I could see being utilized in my classes. We teach an anthropology class. Lots of photographs of indigenous people, which we could use. 
I have a unit that I teach on biological beauty. In other words, what is it, what in different cultures is considered beautiful? So here's a Bedouin woman, and what about this woman would be considered beautiful? Also talk about her dress in the anthropology course. The, um, the beauty thing was actually in a, a class on anatomy and physiology where we talk about physi physiognomy. Um, and if we go to one, I just have one more, two more pictures to show you. Um, if you hover over the picture, you will get a description of the picture, and so you don't have to click on each one. This particular picture I thought was fun because, again, it's about typhus. And this is how doctors would have protected themselves during an outbreak of typhus. Um, I'm not sure when this picture was taken. I didn't look at the date, but I would assume it probably was at the turn of the um, 20th century to the, I mean the 19th century to the 20th century. And then lastly, sometimes um, the descriptions aren't always accurate. For example, this particular description here says it's a single track horse car line in Turkey, when in reality it is not. If you view the larger image, you do get the accurate description, disabled veteran in Chicago. Now, um, a lot of what I would do with these pictures, I think, is just for the students to practice their skills of observation, just like we did earlier in the week. I think this is a beautiful picture, again, for my biological beauty, for my anthropology class, or for um, just the powers of observation. Again, I went to the um, prints and photographs section for my screencast, um, and thank you very much.